Hello, it's me, Jess. Welcome to my channel. And today we are doing a lovely reading on comfort from heartbreak. And I'm actually re-recording this intro now that I've done all three of these piles. And I wanted to do that because now that I've seen these messages that came out, I'm not entirely sure that comfort from heartbreak is the proper title to this video. I know it's the right title for the reading because that's the question that I've been asking the cards in order to receive these messages. So I am going to leave that, but I did just wanna give you a heads up that probably something more like processing heartbreak is more accurate to what's going on here in these piles. And I know those of you who have been on my channel in the past, that's not gonna surprise you in the slightest, but just in case you are new here and you're expecting something a little bit different, I did just wanna kinda of you know, have that tonal shift here at the beginning so that, um, just so that you weren't caught off guard or that you, you know, just it's, it's more like processing. And I know that processing brings its own sense of comfort. That's why we do it. Um, that's why we debrief situations because it can demystify things. Things can become clearer and that does tend to settle our soul. And maybe that's exactly what you're looking for. Like I always say, I, I just work here. So I just wanted to give you that heads up, um, before you get into this reading. So we do have three piles here pile one, pile two, pile three. Um, I do just want to remind you that um, sometimes the energies in tarot can be switched and that may be a way that spirit is trying to actually bring you comfort because um, while I think you should always look at it first person, like the way that the reading is intended and really make sure that that's not your situation before you kind of flip the energies to see if it resonates better that way. For some of you that could potentially be going on here where um, the energies could potentially be flipped. Like I said, just kind of uh, take it however it's resonating for, for you. So with that being said, um, three piles, pile one, pile two, pile three, I'll put the picture up and I will see you at your reading. Interesting. So this is a very interesting message. I'm sorry that I keep saying that. It's just really kind of catching me off guard here, especially in response to a reading where we're asking about healing from heartbreak. Now, because of this, I do want to issue a bit of a heads up and a trigger warning because there is a lot of tough love coming through here in these cards. There's also a lot of spirit guide energy that is just infusing this entire reading because I can tell that both this message that I'm about to give you, but also whatever situation occurred that sparked this heartbreak energy within you, both of these 
actually must carry within them the energy of the Eight of Wands and the Tower, which is very sudden, shocking, jarring, um, rug being pulled out from under you kind of an energy. They must carry that energy in order to actually assist you in your healing journey. And your spirit guides are saying that they don't feel like you quite um, understand that and you don't understand that it's almost like they feel you have this perspective that is some if something is meant to have a healing effect that it should be smooth sailing and very soothing and warm and comfortable and they're they just don't think that you have an understanding that this energy actually can be healing along with a, a plethora of other energies they're giving me images of somebody getting like their stomach pumped or like their knee drained you know very painful very sudden but necessary energies to actually get someone to turn a corner and start to be able to be on the mend um and they're saying that a lot of things in life are like that, not just physically with our physical bodies, but the social, emotional, spiritual, psycho-spiritual healing that we do. It's not all like kind of love and light and not and everything that comes in in this other form and any other form besides love and light doesn't mean that it's abrasive or that it's wrong. And your guides really want to help you understand to shift your perspective to understand that this is actually what was needed and that this is actually their best practice approach with you and they also don't think that you understand that because you don't understand certain things about yourself and how you operate and that's where these kind of difficult truths are going to trickle in here to this reading now before we get any further into this message okay because i've already given you kind of a lot to chew on there but um i just want to make something else very clear this message that is coming through is in no way shape or form meant for someone who has experienced genuine i don't think i can say the word a b u s e Okay, this just isn't addressing those kind of situations. If you are a person where somebody's like put their hands on you or something like that, your guides are actually saying this is not the best avenue for you to process that and heal from because what happened to you was actually very specific and the healing from that requires specific, um, a specific hand a specific it can't like these general messages are just not going to cut it with this empty room i'm almost picturing like a therapist's office where you can go process this like kind of in private with somebody who is trauma specialized and trained there's also something about the consistency so you run the risk of if you go to these general messages something is going to get started something's going to get jump started within you but then you're kind of left to flounder on your own and you really do need that consistent like upkeep and support from a particular person who can mirror back like healthy mirroring and be there for you consistently um and I just need to make that very, very clear before moving on. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and dip further here into this reading for those of you who this is for and who are deciding to stick around. Because remember, this is going to be a bit of a more difficult message. So manage yourselves accordingly here. The reason I had to really stipulate with that second energy is because I'm getting the vibe here with this pile where there's a bit of a crying wolf energy where I think somebody, to be honest, okay, I can tell here in this group, um, you are experiencing pain, but the universe is really questioning whether or not that pain you're experiencing is actually the energy of heartbreak. They're saying it's more akin to having your ego dinged or like an ego death experience, which is healthy and spiritually, spiritually cleansing and actually necessary. And so before they, I think they have more of these experiences kind of up their sleeve ready for you because they think you're ready to actually begin this process but they kind of needed you to get a bit of a taste of just exactly what this is like kind of to experience so that you can see how this this is actually an ego death but because they're experiencing pain um you know they think that it's they're experiencing a heartbreak and they're saying first of all we've got to get very clear that those are not the same thing and now the other thing here is that i feel like your guides have kind of pulled back because when I'm telling you like this is the way that they're giving you your help, okay, they're saying there's certain things you don't understand about yourself. I'm hearing help yourself. You are more than capable of helping yourself. This is a pile who I think doesn't quite understand um, what's going on here in terms of that, that you A, are capable and that your guides I don't think you understand the purpose of a guide or a teacher. It is to guide or to teach. It's not to do it for you. Your guide's responsibility is not to navigate you around every potential obstacle. What would be the point of that? They're not the ones being tested. Your guides have been put through this experience already and they're masters at it. They're doctorates in 
in the realms of spirituality and we're here like digging around in elementary school but because they have that perspective they've already been through this they're not the ones being tested here but that's why they're fit to guide you but you're meant to bump up against the obstacles i heard child you're meant to bump up against the obstacles child this is again a re um, positioning here of your perspective obstacles are not your enemy Things you don't understand are not your enemy. Failures are not your enemy. Mistakes are not your enemy. Feeling ashamed or embarrassed is not your enemy. It teaches you something. It That is the gold. That's where the magic is. That's where the alchemy is. So get comfortable. Get comfortable there. Don't, don't, don't shrink away from it. You're a match for it. You're also meant to be doing it yourself. It's Don't get mad at us. Get mad at you. There's also a thing about manifestation here. So um, I also think this is something that's misunderstood. So again, with this, um, cause the energy they're trying to shift is this child magical. So you're right now you're in the shadow attribute or just like when this happened, you were, um, this pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. We see this a lot in the spiritual community, right? Especially when people just get a hold of that manifestation, right? And they don't fully understand what it is. Manifestation is like karma. It's a law of the universe. It's always happening. Manifestation doesn't only happen when you make a vision board or when you're putting your conscious mind to it. You know, it's always happening because manifestation primarily takes place in the subconscious mind, especially if you're familiar, Dr. Joe Dispenza does a great job explaining this. So like, how do you get in there and start changing that subconscious mind? This is something this group very much needs to understand because your intentions might've been good here. Your conscious mind is where your intentions live, right? I'm going to go to the post office because my, I intend to drop off this post box, right? Like that's something you can be aware of with your conscious mind, but your subconscious is just exactly that. I mean, exactly that it is below your conscious awareness, right? And there is turbulence here in your subconscious mind. And this experience, it was directly manifested from your subconscious mind. And this was again, to let you know how turbulent it is in there. And, um, how turbulent your energy is. And I think, especially if this is a human that you're, that, and not like necessarily just a, a company or something like that, this person, look at, there's the Ace of Cups. Their energy is like very peaceful. Your energy is much, much different to theirs. Now you may have the same intentions to progress along the spiritual journey or something like that, but you're in very different energetic states. I, I think overall, um, this person's energy is very placid and very calm and very peaceful and very much not turbulent, even when they're being direct. This is a difficult thing to master. So no wonder, again, you look up to this person, you admire this person. This is what you sense in them is they kind of clean up their mess in terms of their subconscious mind. And you're not bad for having this go on. Okay. We all have this. This tornado is yours. It's attached to her here. It was this energy, this turbulent energy and again, going back to the, because I saw the child nature card, which that tendency to kind of abuse people um, or the environment. And then I saw the network card too. So again, I feel like this, it could potentially affect broader networks, a family system, something like that. It has broader impacts than you're realizing, but it's the energy that, um, yeah. And so I think you're telling spirit, look there again, back to the covert contract thing. I want to work together. I did this, this, and this again, very conscious mind stuff though. I played by the rules. I did this. Because you felt like your intuition was calling you towards this place. Well, it did. And then you had a destructive incident. And then you called it bad. But it was healing. You did actually bring forth your own healing. You did. It was uncomfortable for your ego, the part of you that needs to be checked and challenged every once in a while, the part of all of us, right? So I feel like you're telling spirit, hey, look, I wanted to work with you. I wanted to build with you, potentially like kind of with this person here. But you led me astray. How could you do this? But it didn't lead you astray. And this goes back to the two impulses. The impulse to feel comfortable and good. And if you want to make spiritual progress or progress really in anything and you don't want to have pain or you or discomfort, it's just not really going to work very well. You know, think about like an Olympic athlete or something. How many sprained ankles and hamstrings and stuff do you think they have? But it's like for the love of the game and the pain is just a part of the process and it tells them how to move their body and how not to and when to and, you know, it's just information. And I don't want to downplay pain. Pain is pain. But this is the kind of pain that is, is necessary. It's necessary. And there's more where it came from. So I feel like you were saying to spirit, like, look, I wanted to kind of build with you. And spirit's like, we want to build with you too, but we're not doing all the work. You need to kind of learn to help yourself here. So I feel like you have been kind of put in this period of isolation so you can kind of cope with whatever this was. So you're not being treated harshly, you know, um, like you're allowed to kind of cope and regroup. But I do feel that the next part of your path here is very much, look at all this energy. It's very much watching. I think again, like 
tarot, engaging with like the tarot. There's more messages coming in that are kind of going to blow your mind. You're going to get a really solid look at yourself. You might not always like what you see. It doesn't mean anything's wrong. Like beyond, yeah, you don't like what you see. Maybe there's some things you'd like to get better at. You would like to feel better at it, but you have to let it be the ego death that it wants to be. You can't be, there's a strong, strong justification process with this pile. Strong. Your ego thinks it's right, thinks it's valid, thinks it gets to lash out at people just to protect itself. You got to kind of decouple that. Um, and as you do, I feel like your mind's going to kind of get blown, but also this is the energy that changes it. This is the energy that changes it. Um, but this is silent because your energy is turbulent and it will be as you go through this process. Um, yeah. And this person, I don't think they're mad at you. Like, I think that maybe because they were firm or direct, you're attributing this to like a kind of anger or agitation on their part, but they're chilling. This person is, again, it was, it's a neutral energy that's actually coming from. It was firm. It was direct. It was matter of fact. They knew exactly what the fuck they were talking about. They knew exactly what it was that they needed to say. The turbulence is actually coming in on your side. And then because it was a strong energy, then you're kind of saying this was it was a it was a lion taking down a hyena like you felt the strength you felt the power but i mean this person was um they're not mad at you and they're definitely not singling you out you know definitely not like just for the purpose of of doing it um yeah so i'm not sure how comforting that was but your guides are very much coming through and saying look this is the way okay this this is how we can bring the comfort into you but there are structures old, the old way's got to fall down it's got to fall down. And for some of you, there's a relationship that needs to fall apart. And, and look, this is what spirit wants for you. We got the own, the, the two major arcana cards here are just amazing. This to me looks like spiritual friendship. Um, we have deep friendship with someone of the same sex. They, they want the lover's card. You, you could potentially have a very great, beautiful relationship here. They want to bring this in for you. Maybe even with this person. Again, they, they haven't closed the door on this. I mean, if you keep this up, that's, you're just willfully choosing this, but you're not bad for messing up. This person definitely knows that. You're not bad for messing up. This person's not going to hold a grudge. I feel like you could potentially be the one that holds a grudge. Again, like from misinformation. But um, they want to bring in this lover's card, but they're saying that you need to hold, hold back and watch and you're going to go through your stages. Let yourself be mad, but this needs to be worked out from within yourself with this. You might want to watch this reading more than one time, but again, like pulling apart these things pain, you know, just because you feel pain doesn't mean you're being victimized. Like all the things I said in the beginning of this, pulling it apart. And just because you're feeling pain doesn't mean you're experiencing heartbreak. This definitely didn't come from your heart space. Pile number one, the thing that got hurt was your ego. Was your ego. Um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot you don't understand. And I feel like I'm hearing beginner's mind, you know, just trying to get yourself in a state of beginner's mind. Um, will be very helpful here to this group. And you've got very strong progress here. Assured success. You do have assured success coming in here um, if you do this. And you are going to overcome your lower natures. That much is clear. And potentially this is a power you will carry forth with you to help others do the same. Um, and this is where potentially people will find a value in you because you will come from this from a very empathetic place um, because you will have lived this. Um, okay. So that's what I have for you. I hope this wasn't too difficult of a message. Um, but there's strong spirit guide energy here. Um, but I think that you yourself are feeling that your guides have like kind of left you, you know, um, or led you astray in some way, but really it was your own subconscious. Like your guides needed you to see, this is a strong mirror. They needed you to see how turbulent your energy is. And we manifest again from our energy, from that energy that's in our subconscious mind. This is yours. They need you to own what's yours because they get blamed for it. I think they get blamed for it quite a bit. And they're like, oh, we try to help this person. I mean, they're fine. They're chilling, you know, but um, they want you to understand. They want to help you understand because you're, that, you're, that you, not that you're necessarily in control of it, certainly not now, um, but that you can. You can get on top of this. Only you can do this. Only you can prevent forest fires. Only you can clean up your sub subconscious mind. They can guide you. They can teach you. But you are going to be the one who is doing it. And if you're going to bump across anybody that they try to send to help you and you're going to make them the bad guy and you're going to cry wolf and say they're victimizing you, well, then you're going to be alone. You're, there's, there's, 
because I kind of feel that the people you're up against, well, uh, you know how they say pray for the people that teach you because that lesson didn't come without pain? That's who you're dealing with. I think this person has experienced genuine A, B, U, S, E. I think they have. So what we're not going to do is have a person who ha is recovering from that space be subservient to someone else's ego and be made to pay like when they we're not doing all that. It's you can be a part of the dance cooperatively or you will be um, isolated. There's just kind of no other choice. So again, hope that wasn't too bad. I think congratulations because I feel like you're really sitting on the precipice of some kind of climb and it will be difficult, but you are hitting a new stage in your spiritual journey. And I feel like that at the very least is worth some recognition. It's worth you being celebrated and don't feel embarrassed about this. Okay. Own up to your mistakes. I do think you may owe someone an apology here. Wait for the right time when you genuinely feel it, when you've genuinely processed this turbulent energy, do not speak a word to this human being until you have really been on this journey. I'm hearing for at least six months and you've really actually cleaned up this turbulent energy because with you, it's not the words. It's not the conscious intentions. It's just being able to back that up with your genuine energy. Okay. Hope that made sense. Um, sorry if this was your first time on my channel and you really didn't know that we'd go all at it like this, but, um, I think you'll know if this is your path or not pretty, um, pretty soon here. So I'm just going to leave it there. Pile number one. Thank you so much. Bye. Number two, what messages want to come out and comfort you during this time of heartbreak? Oh my gosh, so many. Okay, there is a lot of information that wants to come out here in this pile. And right away, I can tell that you're asking about a soulmate connection. And I feel like even just hearing me say that is meant to be of comfort to you here in this time. Just the the confirmation that the love that you have felt here between yourself and this person, the purity of it, the trueness of it, it is real. You're not crazy. You didn't imagine it. Um, this is actually a soulmate connection because I think you've had to go through a period here of really questioning that whether or not that was the case because of everything that's gone on here in this connection and especially how things ended. I feel like there was a very painful, very messy ending here and it might have been because there was a lot of things that were hidden or like because of some kind of sneaking around um, and just themes of betrayal. And so there has been an ending here. It has been very painful and you have had to kind of question like, well, is this a soulmate connection? Is this how a soulmate behaves or is this a karmic that I'm meant to see clearly and process and cut ties with and move on. And the answer that's coming out here in these cards is that this actually is a soulmate connection, but there is karma um, to be worked through. And Spirit's really making a distinction here between those things, like really pulling those things apart of like the quality of your connection, like being a soulmate or being like, you know, we say karmic, but like in Vedic astrology, that's like very tamasic, you know, it's very negative karma to be worked out. It's a very destructive connection. No, this is actually a very sadfic connection. It's a very healthy soulmate, um, connection just in and of itself, but there is karma here to be worked through. And this karma is very negative. And, um, the karma that is affecting the outcomes here between the two of you is very dense. It's very heavy and it originates and it exists primarily here on this masculine's side of things. But, um, because of karma and consequence and how the ripple effect of these things, I feel like the, the, it has bubbled over onto this feminine side of things. And now she has her own karma to work through here in regards of the situation. So it's kind of, I'm picturing like an oil spill, you know, it's like actually really difficult to like kind of clear all of this up. But yes, once this karma is worked through, then I feel like the two of you will be brought back together. And that's also supposed to comfort you here during this time. And I feel like there's been some confusion here around this, around what all of this means, because there has been an ending here in this situation. It's been a painful ending and this ending is permanent. Okay. And because there's been an ending here in whatever way, both the masculine and the feminine energies have been asked to grieve this connection in one way or another. And whatever we think of grieving that implies a death again, applying, it, it implies this like very permanent death energy, but because 
you on a soul level know that this is a soulmate connection because you sense this love between the two of you, you do kind of buck against that. You do, you, you get into a bit of a panic about like, well, what am I grieving? You know, and when I process this, does this mean this connection is kind of cut off forever? Because you can sense the soulmate energy, or you can sense the, po the positivity here. And the answer is no, the soulmate connection is not done. That's not what the permanent ending is. Um, but in order, um, I feel like the comfort that's really meant to come in here in this stack is like us going through this debriefing process of what exactly has gone on here in the situation, why things have worked out the way that they have, why they need, why they are exactly where they need to be and why things cannot be different. So that that part of you that recognizes this is a soulmate connection can relax a bit. Cause I'm picturing like an animal with its tackles up and you know, it's furs all like matted and like all kind of crazy. Like we're just gonna kind of pet all that fur down and just um, get everything going in the right direction, comfort you so you can relax into this and cooperate with this energy rather than fighting against it. Um, and part of you cooperating is um, just understanding. So um, I won't necessarily know what bits of information come through and comfort you in this reading, but that's um, really primarily like the source of the comfort. Right, so let's get further into this. But as we progress, just keep in mind what I was saying here about the whole hidden secrets can harm you because I feel like that is a central soul lesson and a theme that's playing out here in the situation on both sides, the masculine and the feminine's side. I'll try to call it out when I'm seeing it, like highlighted in these situations, but just keep that in mind. So, okay, we have seen this time and time again between these two soulmates. This is a situation that is playing out in some kind of a work environment. And I feel like in this work environment, this masculine energy really cannot keep his eyes, cannot keep his mind off of this feminine energy. He finds her extraordinarily beautiful. I feel like he likes to watch her when she's not looking. And he really does set her apart in a way that is elevated. He, feel like, he feels like she is um, head and shoulders above others. And there's something about this feminine energy that he views as end game. Somebody that you know, he really can have everything with the love, the family, the long-term stable relationship, something much more traditional. The problem is he is just really not ready to be feeling all of these feelings. You know, it's just not fit in his timeline in some way, shape or form. And because he's not ready to feel this way, it really is impacting how he's showing up here in this space or not showing up. So I feel like it is really comforting for this feminine energy to know that this masculine energy does have these feelings and that he does set her apart and he feels that she's special and all of those things because he really is giving a different impression. Um, because either like he's already got a situation that's going on over here. She knows that there's been other people or some kind of shady, sneaky behavior, but also potentially because this is a masculine who is in a habit, a habit that he's outgrown is, you know, kind of what I'm getting, but he has this like habitual way that he interacts with passion energy and it is kind of low vibrational. And I feel like it comes across in the way that he communicates with her. Like if he asks her out or if he is trying to flirt with her or hit on her, it's coming across, you know, very fuck boy. It's giving her the impression that she's unimportant. Um, you know, makes her feel cheap in some way or that he's just really after like a warm body, you know? And so I think it is comforting for her to know that that's actually not the case. It's really all this other stuff that's kind of going on. Now on the masculine side, I think this masculine feels like he can't get this feminine's attention or that she, I think he feels ultimately like rejected here by this feminine. And I think he attributes this to him being in some kind of like a lowly position. And if that surprises you because you don't see that masculine through that same lens, like to you, he's perfectly fine. He's exactly where he should be in life. Or um, maybe you even think he's doing well. There's, I'm hearing the word insecurity here in regards of this masculine. There is some kind of deep rooted um, sense of lack and sense of low self-esteem here within this masculine because, um, because of some kind of instability on the material plane. Like I'm hearing food insecurity and financial insecurity. And um, those two are coming through really strong. So this masculine could have grown up in some kind of like impoverished conditions. And that is something that really does stick with you. And um, I feel like this masculine has very much internalized that in some way, shape or form. And I, I think that um, I'm hearing like, we have to really separate the behavior from the person here in this situation, because behavior doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's always serving some kind of need. And I feel like this masculine has these like long standing behavior patterns that he's developed in order to displace this feeling of lack or not being good enough. And part of it is like, 
he likes to displace his emotions, especially strong emotions, because he doesn't like to feel these emotions because, you know, when he was a kid and he was like learning about emotions and feeling emotions, I think the strong emotions that this masculine felt were like the negative ones of not feeling enough. And he he's always used to kind of looking at the climb, like looking at, you know, there's just this mountain to scale before he can just even be seen as equal to or like on the level as other people. So he is synthesizing this connection with this feminine and this feminine's behavior as a rejection of him personally. He is like actually very prone to that. So I think it's actually very comforting for this masculine energy to know that this feminine energy was not rejecting him. She was not rejecting him outright. There's some some kind of behavior, this long-standing behavior pattern that he was approaching her with. There's she was rejecting the behavior. She was rejecting the third party situation or uh, being involved with somebody that she knows there's other people around or something hidden that she is seen whiffs of, you know, um, she was rejecting being spoken to in a way that made her feel unimportant or like, you know, just another warm body. That's what she was rejecting. She wasn't rejecting anything about him personally. So I feel like those are big things to clear up, um, you know, just, just right out the gate um, as messages of comfort. Now let's talk about this masculine situation here, because like I said, this is kind of where things are getting a little bit mixed up. This like karma that he's got to sort through. And it really does originate. Like I said, there's these longstanding patterns that this masculine has developed in order to really try to help him manage his internal state. And these aren't healthy patterns. We're just trying to understand what's going on here. And it is like using passion energy for some of these masculine um there's there could be difficulties with addiction because I feel like there's just this seeking out of kind of like high or like very intense situations or circumstances that kind of like blot out the pain you know those kinds of things and part of that is I feel like there's some kind of long-standing third party um situation energy in this masculine's background and it could come through in a couple of different ways so um first of all this is a masculine that is very good at compartmentalizing and um so this could be somebody who's like maybe very non-committal but is very good at compartmentalizing like meets people in different spheres of his life and it's like never the twain shall meet they all kind of think that they're the only person that he's talking to and they just don't really know about each other but he's pretty good at maintaining like situations here like that that's a possibility um it could be that this masculine has been in some kind of long-term quote-unquote relationship um and it, it's like he has still stepped out or he's still cheated and he's been able to get away with it for a long time or like whenever it happens it's just overlooked or like he's taken back so it's again that's part of what's solidifying this into a pattern the other option that i'm seeing is like this could legitimately be a long-standing third-party situation where it's like they all kind of know about each other but this isn't necessarily coming across like polyamorous or an open relationship this is like you know i hook up with this person you know i hook up with this person and that's just kind of the way it is um kind of a situation so this is kind of this like long-standing habit or pattern and this is a key way that this masculine energy displaces his emotional state and again tries to manage his internal landscape so it's like whenever he feels those feelings of lack or insecurity or whenever he starts to feel any strong emotions that make him feel uncomfortable or insecure or out of control then he kind of he pulls on the strings of this third party relationship in one way or another to try to um get that to kind of like calm down and i feel like that's what's happened here with this feminine energy where he started to feel all these very strong emotions and then he felt rejected or he feels like he can't get her attention and his his kind of messed up way about going about trying to get this feminine's attention is by compromising his integrity and honesty and allowing this addictive pattern to have authority over his inner spirit where he tries to introduce competition he tries to introduce fear or like pain and this doesn't have to go like you know to a sexual place although there's really nothing here stopping it from going into a sexual place like there's no sense of like uh morality or like um integrity that's like in the way here this is like coming from a very survival lack mentality place so it very well could go to like a sexual place but it doesn't have to it could just be giving the hint like flirting with somebody else um in order to because what he's trying to do is he's trying to displace those strong emotions to get the rise out of some the object of his affection you know he wants her to come chase him because she's scared that he's going to be with somebody else. She wants her to blow up at him or explode and yell at him so he knows that she cares about him and that she's having the strong um, reaction or to maybe even start a fight with somebody here that he is hinting that he could be potentially focusing his attention on. He wants that because then he displaces his strong emotions, but then it, he takes back the control. 
you know, um, where he doesn't feel at the whim of his strong emotions. Now he knows she cares and he feels again, like he can control the situation. So this is a very negative kind of like addictive pattern. Um, and this pattern I feel like has actually been broken here in this situation with this feminine, which is such a powerful thing. And it's honestly the best case scenario. And because this pattern and cycle has been broken now, real growth is actually possible here. And we're cleaning up karma on both sides. Now, in order to kind of go into that, we let's talk about more about this Eros card, this Eros energy, because this, uh, this Eros energy, this passion energy is really the key to kind of keeping this, um, going and keeping this masculine in the dark about um, really owning up to the fact that a this doesn't work and that it, it there really is a problem with it and um, like with his behavior and that he needs to change because I feel like even if he had relationship problems in the past or he tried to do um, like his bad behaviors were called out and he was encouraged to do um, his own self-reflecting work it wasn't really very fruitful he couldn't ever get any traction because this pattern this cycle I feel like it's usually pretty much always worked like it's always kind of like um, you know, been gone full circle. Like once this uh, passion energy is engaged, it kind of like goes full circle. So let's actually talk about this because um, passion is a very blinding emotion. That's what I'm talking about. They seek this, seek out these like high experiences because it blots out the pain um, and it blots out like the fear or the insecurity of like, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? Or even if though I've been trying, like maybe all my plans are going to come crumbling down. I'll be the, everybody's going to know that I'll, I'm just this kid from the Bronx. Like, you know, whatever, whatever this is, right? So this high energy, this passion energy blots that out pain is or passion is this blinding emotion because it is so intense and when I'm talking about passion passion can come through as like desire energy or even anger energy pain is another emotion that does this right because again it's so intense but if you pay attention there's a lot of pain in passion and I think the pain is the like this masculine was my little luna cat just meowed and she's the moon so it's like psychological pain potentially um but with this passion energy this masculine keep in mind was using this passion energy to blot out their own pain by displacing the pain onto others that were involved the fear the feeling not good enough like in that third party situation that that energy he, he hasn't gotten rid of it. He's just given it to someone else. And this has worked for a long time. But I feel like in this situation with this feminine energy and because this cycle was broken, it didn't work. It didn't play out the way it usually does. I feel like this masculine got that pain energy ricocheted back at them hard and is starting to realize that pain and passion are actually intimately intertwined, right? Like the longing, the competition, the fear of loss, the feelings of inadequacy, the betrayal, like on and on, right? So he's actually starting to realize that maybe there's something actually wrong with this approach, wrong with this um, pattern. Another thing is like, there's um, a lot of people here, like in this background, and this feminine energy really isn't like them in a way that honestly is elevated. Like um, she's kind of like maybe the example. Um, and the reason is I think because of her spirituality, because the, um, you know, we all kind of resonate on a certain level. And I feel like what draws all of these people here together um, where they vibrate on the same frequency is like the feelings of lack or the feelings of insecurity. Everyone here in this spread, including this feminine energy. I'm so sorry if you guys can hear my cat. Um, she has food insecurity, even though she's never missed a meal a day in her life, <laughs> literally has an automatic feeder. <laughs> Anyways, um, back to that food insecurity. So everybody here is trying to level up on the physical. It's just that this feminine energy is, has a very different approach to it. It's like very slow and steady wins the race. And she very much works with spirit energy, meaning there's a line that she won't cross. You know, she, she's not going to stoop low in order to achieve. She's going to do everything kind of like above board. And because that she builds her good karmas and, you know, nothing comes back to bite her. That's not the situation over here. Um, there is kind of this, like, I'm calling it like this lack of spirituality, but it's like everyone here is kind of trying to succeed in the material world, but it's like, they are very, they fall into that competition energy, you know? And there's something about the spiritual energy where it's like, if you really are trying to be a good person, you don't want to get sucked into competition, especially in interpersonal relationships, because you know, that can bring out that worst side of you. You know, it can pull you out of your integrity and you just don't want to do that. Like, because it, you, it's your values and you just don't want to do that. Right. Um, so I feel like that's kind of the situation here, which is why every time this passion energy was engaged, um, these people would go around in the cycles here with this masculine for however long it would go on. Problem is, um, once you go around in this kind of cycle of being pitted against somebody else or, you know, playing in this competition game, then people here kind of compromise themselves in some way. Either they have revealed their feelings or, and their feelings or like some kind of weakness in some way, their willingness to kind of, you know, 
behave in an underhanded way in love. I don't know what this is, but basically whenever this masculine energy um, got the message that they actually needed to, to look at their behavior, you know, they actually, they hurt somebody and they were prompted to do some self reflection work, or it was brought to their attention that this was hurting somebody. Then it didn't really have the traction or it didn't really have the, the, the fruit that it has here in this situation when this cycle has actually been broken. Because once you go around in this, um, I feel like it's the blame game because one of the other things that passion energy does is it creates this kind of fixation, right? Again, like the blinding nature, but when you're going after something very passionately, when you desire it, or even when you're angry at it and you're, you fixate on the other. So you're not considering yourself in the situation. You're not considering your contribution here to this space. So it put, because everybody here is basically in a reactive state, it's easy to point the finger. It's like, well, of course I did that because you did this and you did that and you did that, right? Even though I can see here that this masculine often starts it, often introduces the third party situation, they can just kind of say like, oh, well, you were being silly or you were being crazy, but they know what they're doing. Like this person knows what they're doing. It's just in the past, they've been able to kind of, um, shirk out of it, you know, in some way, shape or form. But this feminine is a different beast altogether here. And I can see that this masculine energy didn't see that clearly again, because they only really see things through this passion energy. Um, and so I even think they're drawn to this feminine energy. They know that she's something special to them. They know it, they sense it. They just don't know why, you know, that she's got something else on offer here. They can only kind of see her through this passion lens. So I feel like the passion energy was very strong, but but this feminine is very different than these other people that they've gone around um, in the cycles with. Remember, hidden secrets may harm you. This feminine has this kind of hidden secret to energy here, but it's a hidden strength. And it really did kind of bite this masculine in the butt. But again, this is like in the best case scenario, right? Um, and we'll talk more about like, well, actually, let's do it. But I feel like this feminine potentially could have been like demonized or projected upon because this masculine and others here, like if there's other people that are jealous of this feminine, these other people here, um, they are willing to engage in like that competition and that game playing energy for control and for, um, to elicit strong emotion, right? So this feminine with this masculine energy very naturally finds herself in the position that he is always trying to maneuver himself into. She very naturally finds herself in just because of her standards and the way and her maturity really in this space. But because this masculine really can't, doesn't know how to process her energy, um, I think she maybe was blamed and it was, oh, like seen as like, she's a betrayer or like she has some kind of like secret, right? Like there's something about her. She's the one like playing games. She must be because she has the top spot and that's how I get the top spot. When really that's not the case at all. This feminine kind of does have hidden energy. It's a hidden strength. So I can see here that this masculine understood. And I feel like this is comforting for this feminine to hear about herself. Um, this masculine readily saw this emotional energy, knew that she was an emotional person and that she wanted some kind of like loving energy and that that was important to her. And I feel like that emotional space has always kind of been synthesized as a pain point, as a weakness, as something that he can play with in order to like kind of gain that control. He's not used to this emotional energy being a strength. And it is here with this feminine because she's mature actually here in this space. And another aspect here is like, usually people who are emotional, I feel like, I don't know, you hear of like the clingy person, you know, and they're needy and they're dependent and everything. But the secret of this feminine that he can't see for whatever reason, because of his own blindness really, because it's not like she's hiding it, is her independence. This feminine is very independent. So she's mature and she's independent, which means that if something untoward is on offer here, this feminine can turn it down. Make the difficult decision and end the situation, even if it causes her pain, um, you know, or other people pain, because she has recognized something here with this third party situation and with this very immature behavior. It's a warning of the problem either now or in the future. And she's spotted it. She knows that this energy goes nowhere fast. And that this is an empty promise thinking that just because you've competed against somebody and won out. Cause I think this masculine even does want to come in here and like assuage her fear, fears like, Oh no, I want you. I don't really want this other person, you know? And he thinks that's going to make it all better. But in that scenario, in that fantasy, he is the victor. He is the person with the power. And, um, 
This feminine knows that even if she were to quote unquote win the battle, she would lose the war because somebody who sets themselves up to have third party situations, then this is a habitual pattern. It's only going to cause more pain. So she might as well end it now. And this was not accounted for here in this space. Um, because this masculine like isn't prepared to have a legitimate relationship. Even if he's been in relationships and he very well may have something that's like long standing here, it's very much born of this lower vibrational energy, this passion, pain, high, low cycle, which is more akin to addiction energy than love energy. And that's exactly how you build an addiction in the brain, especially if it's intermittently reinforced. And this masculine kind of likes to beckon people into this. So now, because this cycle was broken and it has been broken by this feminine because, um, of three different variables. First is the passion energy. There's a ton of passion um, here in this situation between this masculine and feminine very naturally. And it comes because this is a soulmate connection. But this passion energy was prematurely cut off. Like it wasn't fully explored. It feels like for a lot of you, it wasn't explored at all because potentially this is like a work situation. But even if it was, it was like, you know, very short lived and potentially it was explored in a way that this feminine didn't approve of it definitely wasn't seen as like loving it was like painful or betrayal or something it was like cut off very shortly so something about this passion energy was left unexplored and like cut off and cut off in this cycle and the third variable that ended this cycle that this masculine is used to going around in is the feminine herself and her because she's much much more than she was given credit for She's much more mature, knowledgeable, experienced. She's showing up as the strength in this situation. And in the face of her maturity, this masculine showed his immaturity. In the face of her knowledge, he showed his ignorance. In the face of her experience, he showed a lack of experience, especially in emotional love matters, integral matters, um, things like that. And so it's broken this cycle. And in breaking this cycle, it's given both parties this beautiful ability to do this forensic work, this detective work, to actually seek out the truth. And like, so especially this feminine energy. Now let's talk about her karma here for a second. Because like I said, we've, we've really gone in on this masculine. We can see like how this, this is like very, very negative karma. And I can tell you, we've kind of talked about the seed of this negative karma, like the origin of it, but I'm telling you this, like there's, this multiplies out, you know? So it's like, if you find out about one person that's hidden and then maybe like another person or like one situation, it's like, there could potentially be a lot of people here, you know? Um, this can like really, really like kind of get out of control depending on, depending on what's going on in this situation, right? But let's talk about this feminine and her karma in this situation, because I feel like in the past, and we've seen this before as well in past lives, this habit here of this masculine to allow other energies to kind of like to involve them and to stoke this environment of competition and things like that. Well, this feminine is the clear winner. And there's other people here who know that and can see that. And I think he was expecting these people to like fight with him or like, you know, but they want to take out the competition. In past lives, I feel like this has ended very badly. This has ended. These are themes of like death, um, betrayal, and there's an orphan here. So you, you do the math. You, you, you put that together here. But that's the kind of energy that you're trying to break. So this feminine energy, I think, has had to learn that things are not always what they seem. Things that are hidden from you can harm you. And um, that if something is not up to her standards, if she's not being treated in a way that makes her feel 100% respected and safe, that she needs to make the difficult call and end the situation and just take that pain because it's going to like continue on here. It's warning her of a problem in the future. So she's had to kind of like cut off this situation. And that's where I want to get into this grieving energy here because remember I said, you can sense that this is a soulmate connection, but at the same time, you know, this has been an ending and this feminine knows she can't put up with this. This is unsustainable, but like this love situation is here. Right. And this masculine knows that she's not going to accept him and potentially that he's really messed things up forever because he knows he showed up in a, an energy that is be beneath her, not fit for a queen. She's the only sovereign here in this like entire spread. So let's do it then. Let's look at this very painful ending that we began this reading talking about, realizing that we needed to debrief this situation and understand exactly what this ending is and exactly what it isn't. What's ending? What is it that you are being asked to grieve here from a soul perspective and from a material perspective? Well, 
what's going on on a material level is we've got a feminine energy who has wised up in some way. She's seen something here in this situation, just got a whiff of something maybe. She's realized that what is hidden in this situation has the potential to harm her. And with this finger energy, um, she's identified something here as having the potential to harm her now or potentially in the future. And not just her, any family that they could have together, any child that they would have together. And that's actually huge in this situation um, karmically because remember I said there's some kind of like an orphan energy here. Now karmically that's on both of them, but it's definitely part of her karmic debt here as well. So when she became aware here of the fact that there was sneaky shit going on or, or um, some kind of addiction or long-term behavior, she didn't run. She didn't get into denial. She wasn't trying to fantasize or ex make excuses for the situation. She bossed up. She made a very painful decision here to end this situation very finally, very matter-of-factly. This is soulmates here that we're dealing with. So this was painful for her. It was also probably very painful here for this masculine. Now, what is it that she ended here in this situation? Well, did she end the soulmate connection here with this masculine? No, she didn't end the soulmate connection here. She, remember what I was saying, what this feminine is rejecting here, like with this masculine, it's nothing fundamentally fundamental to who he is. What she's rejecting is the treatment. She's rejecting being spoken to in a certain way, made to feel a certain way. She's rejecting this third party situation. She's rejecting this sneaky shit. That's what she's refusing to engage with. Now, unfortunately, this masculine is so fused with those behaviors here at this point that in order for her to cut ties with those negative behaviors, with that addictive behavior pattern that has been at the center of this reading, she also has to cut ties with him. So she has cut ties with the uh, karmic ties with that negative addictive behavior pattern and probably her own codependency that got her looped into this situation to begin with. And now it's this masculine energy's turn. But it's probably going to be a lot harder here for him because like I said, he's so fused with it. He probably thinks it's, it is who he is, right? And remember what I was saying before of... Um, you know, that's a big thing I learned in psychology is we have to start like pulling behavior away from like the person, like who, like pull apart the behavior and what is the person because behavior doesn't exist in a vacuum and behavior always meets a need. And so it's, um, behavior can be changed. And in this situation, I think that's what he's been able to pull apart here because she's ended the cycle. It's given him a different perspective on this. He's actually gotten some traction here and he's realizing that, um, this doesn't work, that he is trying to meet some kind of other need here and that's not really even working. Because in the past, I think that he was just so grateful to have the pain gone of like feeling insecure or you know, whatever it was, feeling not good enough. And because he wasn't experiencing the pain, he really did think that the pain was like solved and that it, it went away, but it wasn't. It was just going into other people. He was just displacing it and making them feel insecure, making them feel not good enough. So it's not a solution. And this masculine does have a heart. And they're in the grips of some pretty nasty stuff. So, you know, some kind of long-standing habit, some kind of addiction, all that stuff makes people, you know, do things. It changes their behavior. It makes them do things that they wouldn't normally if they were in like a different state. And this masculine does have a heart. And I feel like it will make him actually want to change this situation and start to pull himself apart. And that's where this reading gets very spiritual because spirituality teaches us what we are not. You know, we're not our egos. We're not our bodies. We're not our, um, you know, long-standing thought patterns. We're not our illnesses or our disorders. We're not even our behavior. We're something much deeper than all of that. We are the observer. We are the witness. We are the energy that takes on form and goes through all of these experiences in life in order to learn that perspective, what we are and what we aren't in order to awaken to the truth. And I feel like this is a very potent experience for this masculine because they're starting to pull that apart. They're realizing, they're getting that, they're getting that. That, wait a second, I'm actually not this behavior pattern. I'm not, like I'm hearing, I'm not a piece of shit. I'm not just hopeless. I'm not an addict. I'm not, like fundamentally, I'm not that. They're starting to pull that part apart. And realizing that they can change this. And they're getting one step closer to like who they actually are. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So this dysfunction here that I'm calling this addictive behavior pattern could be an addiction, could be a disorder, 
but it's, it's this dysfunction is actually the teacher. And there's exactly one spiritual teacher here and it's life. It's an interactive, all encompassing experience. Life is the spiritual teacher. You can call it life. You can call it the Maya, whatever it is. And all of it exists to help shake you awake. And I feel like this is a very potent lesson here, but this masculine is going to learn this lesson. I feel like they pu felt pulled behind this lesson, right? Because when the disorder is in the driver's seat, when the dysfunction is in the driver's seat, it, it thinks that it's, it can tell you what to do, but usually it's devil energy, right? It's like, yeah, uh, you know, make her feel jealous. That That's how we solve this. And it's short-term satisfaction at the expense of the long-term. So it's this negative mentor energy that ultimately enables the student to move on and it impar imparts false instruction. But the, this masculine is actually learning this lesson, getting a handle on it and um, actually developing the wisdom, learning the lesson here that this dysfunction had to teach pulling this all apart, understanding what he's trying to do with like this passion energy, just burning out the pain. And it's never going to last long term. Passion doesn't. Love does. And I feel like this is a masculine who didn't know how to love or who equated passion with love and created whatever bullshit this is with relationship. I don't think... I think this masculine is going to have to kind of realize that they really haven't experienced a genuine relationship because they've been in the grips of whatever this is. So this is unfolding exactly how it needs to be. And I'm hearing this feminine energy, that Rumi quote that says beyond ideas of right and wrong, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Cause I feel like this masculine may have uh, been very prone to black and white thinking. Maybe she herself was even in black and white thinking of like, good, bad, soulmate, karmic, um, you know, whatever. And it's like, all of this is just an experience. It's just an experience. It's a nuanced experience. It's so, it's much, much more. Um, it's so much more. And she's just waiting. I feel like she's just waiting. Um, this energy as well, because I'm hearing the song Rodeo by Garth Brooks. Ain't no woman, flesh and blood. It's that damned old rodeo. Oh, well, it's bulls and blood. It's the dust and mud. It's the roar of the Sunday crowd. It's the wide in his knuckles. The gold in the buckle he'll win the next go round. It's boots, it's chaps, it's cowboy hats. It's spurs and I let it go. It's the ropes and the reins and the joy and the pain. And they call the thing a rodeo. So I feel like this feminine has been like pitted against people. This feminine energy. Men, women women, whatever, um, in terms of competition. And like, that's not actually the competition. The competition is this addiction energy, this chasing the high, the rodeo, because it, it's the only thing that has like really blotted out the pain. So the other thing, okay, this reading has been so long. So I'm also seeing here, like, this is all about like what spirit wants is the success energy for both of you. Um, like this is strong Leo energy, um, the six of wands, it's progress. It's also recognition. I feel like this masculine has always wanted to feel successful and wanted recognition, but he's got to go about doing it like the right way. And this feminine is a great example because she goes about building things the right way. It's sustainable. It's going to last. Um, so again, I feel like this is kind of, the energy that's waiting, you know, now this feminine energy, I think is much closer to experiencing this where it's like, because she's, um, ended the situation and she's just kind of keeping at something like very slowly and steadily here. I feel like she is going to have some kind of success energy, maybe gain some kind of recognition or prominence or, um, you know, something, something here like that. So October may be a significant month. Look, oh yeah, we've got um, position of authority, highly thought of, and new possibilities here. That's what's like awaiting this situation. This isn't just about being together because if this isn't cleared up, then it's going to equate to a lot of pain. This is transforming something. This is about cutting ties with a karmic cycle. And that karmic cycle has been broken here, especially on the, the feminine side, which has changed the landscape here for this masculine. And it's really given him a leg up and being able to break it for himself as well. This is potent. This is powerful. And it's moving from this Don Juan energy to this companion energy, right? Using the power of romantic attraction for private agendas into having this genuine, loyal, tenacious, unselfish companion energy. This is beautiful. So that's what I have for you guys, pile two, if you're still listening. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> um, 
If that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You might want to rewatch this one. Um, you might want to rewatch this one. Yeah. All right. Um, bye, guys. <laughs>
because I feel like there is kind of a question that like hangs in your energy around this situation of like, look, is it possible to heal the situation, to actually connect, to have, you know, communication, to have reconciliation? And the answer is just very clearly, very lovingly and matter of factly, yes. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy or quick um, or that there's not a certain level of conciliatory or sacrificial energy that needs to be embraced and just, again, accepted and just dealt with head on. It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. This to me looks like they're cutting a very specific specific path for you here through this situation. It's reminding me of like the straight and narrow, which is a reference to Christianity, where it's very much that one foot in front of the other. You're kind of going through the dark woods in the middle of the night, getting cut up by thorns, just one foot in front of the other, you know, kind of a situation. But to me, the straight and narrow is also very much a situation where because there is you know, this specific path you need to take, you're either on your path or you're not. It's very much that energy um, that is coming through. So potentially it could be difficult. And I think you know that because this blackness of the night sky here in this bridge card, that's really, really a dark night. Like there is no stars in the sky above the ocean. That's, that's, I feel like you feel hopeless in this situation or depressed or confused. You feel like maybe you don't know the way forward and you're just being reassured that there absolutely is um, a way forward. But the way forward is not in this engineer, mental, logical, how can I do this strategically energy. It's in following your heart energy. And the way that this is shaping up for me is actually very, very beautiful. Now, um, I do just want to, well, okay, I'm being pulled into a lot of different directions. Maybe this is your energy as well. It's like, uh, I don't know really where to start, right? Okay, so I'm being drawn up here to this side situation that really isn't, if that makes sense. I feel like this is relevant to you because this message I'm about to give you is going to maybe feel like it's a tangent or that it's not related to the message that you came here to receive, but it is. And it's important that you understand that because this side message is actually how you're being guided and how you are being shown how to navigate this overall situation that you came here asking about. Does that make sense? So I'm going to tie this all back together kind of like in the end. So this side message that really isn't, um, I feel like you've lost someone through death and this doesn't have to be recent, but it feels like a mother. And if it's not a mother, I feel like your mother is very much alive and potentially the person that you're having difficulty with. And in that case, this is a grandmother, but this grandmother energy has a very strong maternal quality, like to you, towards you. So maybe this grandmother was very involved in your life or feels more like a mom, or there's just very much like a strong um, soulmate connection here between the two of you. Either way, there that this is the person that is trying to make contact with you. This person has been trying to bridge the gap and make contact with you here in the physical. And I feel like you've felt this. For the witchier crew here, you probably are already aware that this person has been trying to make contact and this is just a confirmation of that. They're coming through really strong. Um, but if you've just kind of noticed that like you've had a series of events that were very synchronistic and they were just reminding you of your mom or of this grandmother, grandmother, that's not happening by accident. They are actually trying to connect with you, um, here and just let you know of their presence. They really are trying to communicate with you. Now I'm going to put that, you know, to the side here just for a second, because I feel like there's another group here where you have lost this person, whoever, whoever this is to you, but potentially you've also lost a child through death which my heart goes out to you. I am so sorry. That sounds so hard to deal with. And But if that's the situation, then I feel like this mother energy is coming through to say, look, this child's with me. And they're showing me like the child bouncing on the knee and they're coming through to let you know like we're okay and they're giggling and they're laughing. And I feel like um, it's kind of like a pastime that they do together where they put these things in your path to make you smile. Um, I feel like a butterfly might be a very strong symbol. So it's either this mother figure or grandmother alone that is doing this, or it's this mother figure with a child that you potentially have lost, right? Um, that's coming through. And um, they like to make you smile, you know? Like, especially the two of them together, they like to make you smile. It's something that they like to do. Um, and that might sound to you frivolous, like, okay, that's very sweet. You know, they're trying to let me know that I'm not alone, make sure that I feel loved. But actually this is your spiritual guidance and this is your path forward because your path and your success, like in dealing with this situation, has to do with you connecting with your heart space and not in some two dimensional cat poster kind of a way either. Like, okay, follow my heart, like, you know, reading rainbow. Like, I'm, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a genuine connection with your heart space um, here in this situation. That's what they're trying to do. Um, and I feel like some of you really like nature or when you're out in nature, they put things that you like in your path or things that are pretty, but also I, I think it connects with this mother or this grandmother smells, especially is what I'm getting. Like, 
Um, but things that remind you of this mother or a family or of warmth, things that give you a visceral experience of being loved and protected and cared for and warm. That's you connecting with your heart space. And it's almost like Hansel and Gretel, like the little breadcrumbs leading your way out of the forest. This is the way. Follow your heart. I'm hearing follow your heart. That is the message. That is the guidance. Now there's another kind of message here for those of you who um, you haven't lost a child through death. Okay. But there's still, again, the whole energy of this pile, there's this kind of death energy between a parent and a child. So it could even be just like an ending of a relationship or a separation. For others of you, you've lost this mother through death and you kept a secret here about a child from this mother, from your parents, from from everyone potentially, from um, you know your family. This mother energy obviously has passed on and now knows that. And um, she, is, she feels pain that you couldn't come to her maybe with this or that there was such a, a culture between the two of you that you didn't feel like you could talk to her about it. There's an acknowledgement of the pain that you have felt here. And she understands. Like that's the thing that's coming through is like she understands why you did and that you were kind of carrying this. Um, and like, like, I don't know. It's like just a lot of love. She's just infusing this with a lot of love. Like I get it. I understand um, why, why you hid that. There's also some jokes here about a father of like um, that maybe a father is very concerned with appearances or business or reputation and maybe even uses humor to kind of deal with like very heavy emotional situations. I don't know. Um, but that's really like a healing balm that's trying to come through. So there's really a strong, they want you to feel their motherly energy here, assisting you to kind of wrap up and deal, um, with this situation. So, okay. That's kind of the side energy, but all of this is like connecting with the, the heart space. Um, that's breadcrumbing you to dealing with this overall situation. That's where I want to switch gears and kind of get back into this because following your heart is the key to dealing with this situation because I think you know that you're dealing with a situation on the physical. There's some very real obstacles here, very scary, very real things that you have to contend with and confront. Could have to do, it's very Saturnian things, obstacles, blockages, contracts, the legal system, potentially marriages. Um, I think you're um, in a secret here potentially as well or like things coming out. And because you know how delicate this situation is, however it's delicate, this to me feels delicate. Um, and there's a lot of fear. Because you know about that, that's what's leading you into this engineer energy, into this like very logical space of like, well, because it's kind of like traversing a minefield. You're like, well, I don't want to step here. I don't want to step there. So you're bringing a lot of mental energy to that. But that's what this is telling you. It's like, no, you've got to follow your heart energy. Um, that's what's going to actually guide you through this situation. Um, it's, it's going to know the way. And I'm seeing this glass here saying like break in case of an emergency. Um, but that's what they're kind of trying to tell you. And that's important because I feel like part of what's making this, there's, this is very clearly a situation that is dealing with karma, like very heavy, sticky karma. Right. Um, but there's themes here. So there's the child issue on one hand and maybe the separation. Okay. Like that's definitely going on. And it has to do with something to do with Pluto. So um, Pluto deals with secrets, um, abuses, traumas, um, deals with sex, taboo, uh, buried, anything that's hidden or buried, and other people's money. So I feel like all of these things could potentially be somewhat factors here in any in any combination in this situation as to something that you're afraid of coming out. Because, so that's the child issue, right? But then there's also linkages to that and themes of uh, legacy and status, business, uh, wealth, and some kind of extreme change in fortune, reputation, those kinds of energies. They're wanting you to decouple that because it's, th it's this energy of like trying to manage your reputation, trying to manage your business, feeling like if whatever this was was to come out, that it's going to have this detrimental effect here. Um, but that's what's holding this in, into the situation where actually then it can't come together. There can't be a connection. There can't be this healing energy. So I feel like it, it is kind of steep. You know, it is, you're on kind of this rocky, steep road here, but it is possible and you are being guided through this. And it's possible you will work through this, but I'm kind of getting like some of you, you could boss up and deal with this like in one lifetime, which this might, it's okay if you need to take it in smaller bites. I feel like they're just kind of encouraging you to really go for it here. Um, Cause I'm hearing the spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. I feel like you've always known that you needed to clear up this karma like whatever this is, it feels heavy and sticky and your spirit is very strong and just very wanting to deal with this head on. And I feel like this is a situation that needs to be dealt with head on. Um, 
but then like when we incarnate, you know, of course it's, it's just a different story. Um, now that's another thing that I feel like I'm meant to kind of comfort you with this mother energy, because, um, with this God mediator energy here at the bottom of the deck, I feel like this whole situation is very divinely guided. Um, I feel like there's been a direct intervention here in terms of God. And, um, that's the other thing is you have to trust that, um, there is actually something going on here behind the scenes. Cause I feel like God has actually appointed this spirit guide. And to be honest, I feel like for a lot of you, this spirit guide that's helping this situation is actually this mother or grandmother figure. And they have this gift for negotiating fairly. They have an understanding of both sides of the equation. They have this ability to give a creative, um, pragmatic solution. They really can build this bridge back together. And they just want you to know that there's a lot going on here behind the scenes that you can't necessarily see or even fathom. Um, but everybody involved here in this situation, cause it feels like there's multiple people involved. So everybody involved here in this situation is actually being led and guided and worked with, and they're being encouraged to approach this situation with softness and openness and humility. And they're being, uh, given situations in their life. That's, um, encouraging them to try a different approach. And I feel like the different approach for all of these people and for you specifically, it feels like, um, for you, this mother energy is your spirit guide that has like in, or one of them, you know, but, but, um, this is meant to give you comfort to see the scope, right? Um, so it's meant to give you comfort, not just because of the, uh, love energy that is between you and this mother or grandmother figure that's meant to also give you comfort for you to draw upon. But the very fact that this energy was in your life that worked, worked with you on the physical, um, and now has transitioned over and now is guiding that. Cause I feel like when they were uh, with you in the physical, they planted their seeds with you. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. They planted their seeds with you. And now as they've transitioned over, they're watching those seeds come to fruition and they're kind of highlighting them. They're kind of reminding you of them. That might be these memories that they're trying to, um, connect you with in order to help guide you through this situation. And that is supposed to comfort you because of the scope of everything of the universe. And I'm hearing that Bible verse of even the hairs on your head are counted there. And there's no detail too small for like God and universal energy to be aware of and to be factored in, to be considered so much so that this situation, it was always known that you needed to overcome this. Nobody disrespects you enough on the other side to suggest that you can't actually deal with this karmic situation that you need to deal with for whatever reason. Um, you can, you're a match for this. And you, you've been given the support to deal with this. And that support includes this. It's all been so planned out and so accounted for that this mother energy could incarnate into your timeline. It's been planned out to that degree. And this is also part of the guidance energy that you're meant to connect with is because I feel like this mother as a teacher, as, as your spirit guide, I'm hearing my legacy was connection. My legacy was warmth. And there's also something here where I feel like potentially, um, you don't think about this mother energy, um, through the lens of mother, either because when this mother passed, you were like an adult, you know, and you were well into adulthood and maybe most of your memories were even with them, like as an adult, and it's been so long since you've been a child. But another reason is potentially, you know, this mother had struggles or was up against something difficult. So you think of her struggle, you think of her maybe like grit or her tenacity, her like fighting, but you're being encouraged to think of this person as your mom. Uh, remember them in that way or as your grandma, because I'm hearing that was my legacy. My legacy was connection and warmth and love and even things I had to fight against. It was always in that vein of connection. This is what this soul excels at. So their lessons, they gave, they lived by example, first of all. And I feel like it's almost like a black light where it's because it's for you and it was meant to not be touched by anyone else. Those lessons were for you because there could be other influences here that are just too encapsulated in the material world. So that's, it's a very private relationship channel. That's why this mothering connection was made between you and this person. So it's almost like going back over with a black light. So it can't be seen by the naked eye by anyone else. So it can't be tainted and tampered with. Cause somebody here might've also tried to fuck with this person of like, oh, well, your mom think, you know, suggesting that your mom would just be so disappointed or your mom would just think about your mom. And they're trying to draw a wedge in between you. And they're trying to control this mother figure's legacy. This is not appreciated. They hate this, um, this mother figure. Um, cause they're, they're saying, go back over it with a black light. There's something only you can see. And it's, it clicks in for you. It becomes illuminated when you think of me as your mom, when you think about how I navigated that, how I showed you how to deal with people, how I showed you how to make bridges. And you need to stay open and humble and try my way. 
I'm hearing try my way because your way is very logical and your way is very um, strategic. I left you my way. I left you all my book of secrets. You know, maybe some recipes too, but I left you my book of secrets of, of how you can build this bridge. You already know it. And I feel like this uh, mothering energy has maybe given you direct pieces of advice that are now will be illuminated in the proper time in the right situations you will connect with those they're meant to give you strength they're meant to connect you with a heart space and to trust your heart to guide you through this situation and for some of you where you're dealing with a mother figure or somebody here who's very difficult this is also telling you to trust your intuition because i feel like this mother figure this grandmother was also nobody's damn fool do you know what i'm saying that's what i'm hearing i was also nobody's fool so where the time came to be uh connecting like with this child i was connecting and i was very loving when the time came to call someone on their nonsense I saw it and I called them on their nonsense but it was never cruel or it was never you know it was just very matter of fact there's something here like that because I do think that for some of you there's a, a real problematic person here and you might not even know who this person is um, but if you lead with your heart this this person who is in some way benefiting from this situation and negotiates with an ulterior motive or a hidden agenda either personally or professionally will be illuminated that's also the gift of leading with the heart you know um, that people who just want you for status or all these things that you're trying to protect, you don't really quite understand that it's drawing some sycophants to you. So it's protective to follow your own heart um, here as well. It's keeping certain people away from you. It's going to help unravel this um, karmic cycle here as well. So you're being called to like pull these two things apart because it's like you can't do both. You can't um, bridge this gap, but then also... Um, deal with like this I feel like this is the parent like the parent cannot bridge this gap and also maintain their bullshit facade that they want people to believe that they are but they aren't really because we all make mistakes even egregious ones because this could potentially have been an egregious one but it's like make the gesture like make the gesture is what I'm hearing make the gesture um that's what's going to cause people to like believe you Otherwise, you just look like you're kind of strategizing around. And potentially, you've drawn someone else to you with this energy. That is maybe in some way, I'm trying to pass off as a mother figure um, that is around you. So the truth needs to be rebuilt here in this situation. And I feel like um, it's just eating you up inside is what I'm hearing. But they're also, like, you feel like you have secrets here in this situation. But other secrets are here as well. There's, there's things that could potentially surprise you. And I feel like there's been this intermediary, this, and it feels to me like, I don't know, potentially this is like this other parent or it's somebody who is like a mother figure in your life, or I don't know, or you worry about this and you, you write to worry about it. But again, you're, you, it will crumble. Like eventually the truth always comes out. And so even if, cause I think some of you worry that this there's water under the bridge or something here has been poisoned. Um, even if potentially like, okay, how do I want to say this? So there's an energy here of like power or strategy and in terms of like status or money, that's an energy that is shared between you. And I think this other parent or between your parents, there's a parent. So somebody here in this situation responds by smothering trying to control, trying to helicopter, trying to domineer, just too much, right? Um, and then somebody else here responded to this through abandoning or distancing. In some way, shape, or form, these are the two energies. But it's re a response to the same thing here. So I think if you're... Uh, Oh gosh, how do I even describe this? Like if you're worried about a child not accepting you or having potentially been poisoned against you, even if you did leave the situation and you know that was wrong and um, but you were still sending money or letters or um, gifts at Christmas and you're like, I bet that person's other parent wasn't even giving them those things. I think you're probably right. But it's like you making the big gesture, you making the contact, you having no secrets and just putting all your cards out here on the table and making yourself open and making making the gesture... I think you'll be surprised at be at this healing energy about some secret coming out here to do with this mother or to do with this child or, you know, can potentially move. It's like Jenga. It's like start removing some of the pieces and eventually the tower is going to fall down. This tower has to do with karma and it needs to fall and it might be destructive, but this is like a healing crisis kind of an energy that you are being encouraged to face head on and induce. Um, I'm hearing come what may, come hell or high water. And I think you know that it's like pretty steep here but I'm hearing don't let it prevent you from doing right by a child and leading with love and 
I hope this wasn't confusing because I can tell some of you are actually the adult child here and it's like you have been wronged and I'm probably speaking more to like your parents in this situation of like they need to they need to own something here they need to make something right they need to make a gesture they need to reach out and you know that um, there is potentially a there's a some kind of destructive mother here and I don't know like this is like really negative energy and this could be the person that's benefiting whether it's your mother or a mother figure or something and Maybe you don't see this person clearly, but it's because you're, you're strategizing and they're very strategic. And so you're resonating, you're vibrating on that level with them. They're, so break the cycle, lead with your heart energy, and all this is going to unravel. And yes, it'll probably be hard, but it's going to be worth it. This is how you heal um, the situation. Um, I'm hearing this song. Uh, it's like, this is how to be a heartbreaker. Um, boys, they like a little danger. It, it tells you like how to play in the dating game. So maybe somebody here has done that as well. Um, but somebody here is like a pirate. They're looting from this situation and you can't see it clearly. So it's almost like you, you don't, of course you're confused. You don't know the right steps to take, but uh, yeah, the truth needs to be rebuilt. I feel like Anubis is actually watching over this situation that might connect with somebody. Um, and you might want to look into Anubis and like the... But, you know, he's holding the Ankh, which is a symbol of like resurrecting life. It's also for me, the top of it looks like the Libra symbol, which is like relationships. He's waiting, but he's waiting to see what he needs to see. And the details matter. And you can't see all the details. But I feel like there's somebody here who potentially is like keeping this secret that they fled a situation because they don't want their reputation to be changed. There's somebody here who potentially tried to um, have a baby or get somebody pregnant by tampering with something in order to bind them together, in order to, they tried to change their reputation, their um, status, like through that, but I don't know that it worked necessarily. They wanted to like maneuver someone into this kind of a dynamic so they could have power over them or money or just be bound, be bound. Like there's a binding here. So I feel like I've just been rambling here at the end, but it's because I don't know where you are in this situation. I hope this made sense. Follow your heart, pile number three. There is a possibility, but not if you lead with strategy. Okay, if you lead with strategy, it's like a Chinese finger trap. If you just keep pulling on it, you're never gonna break free. You're just gonna get frustrated and confused. You have to be open to trying something different. Everybody here in this situation is, and you have to trust as well that everybody in the situation is also being given these experiences to to try a different way from their side of, of things. And I think you're being, being encouraged. There's like a father energy here who I think has fled a situation in one way or another and is being encouraged to like come back and make a first move and maybe even stir up some shit. But it'll cause a healing crisis and things might get worse before they get better, but this is the way through and um, you gotta follow your heart or you'd never do it. I'm hearing lion heart as well. Like this is building up that heart chakra. It's building up some kind of courage energy. And for some of you, I can't stress this enough. It's like you're the child and this is meant to comfort you that all of this is being encouraged here, like on the other side of things. So <laughs> anyways, I'm so confused and tired. Hopefully that resonated with you. If this resonated, please like comment and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys. Thank you.